I've had the, the wonderful opportunity and privilege to deliver an up lecture at uh, Grand Rounds at half a dozen or so medical schools, maybe more, and uh, we call it Five Buckets of Death. And it begins generally with me putting up one big bucket and four little buckets. And then I asked the faculty and staff at the medical school to name a fatal demise. How is it that, that people are killed? And they throw things out and use stroke and heart attack and car accidents and, and uh, influenza and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I throw it into one of these unidentified buckets. I usually don't even do the little, little giveaway there. But uh, it's, it's been interesting in that, I think it was at the University of Virginia, I went uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so, maybe more, and uh, everything fit nicely into, into one of these five buckets over and over and over again. And I've, I've, uh, I may have been stumped once there, um, and I'll talk later about what that was, if it's even important. But uh, very, very generally, everything you can think of or commonly heard of, common deaths sit in one of these categories. And then after they get, throw the, the demises at me and I put it up, what happens next? And I label these things and they are chronic, microbic, genetic, kinetic, and toxic. So we got chronic disease, microbic, it's the bugs, uh, the viruses, the bacteria, the, the fungi, the uh, prions, um, those nasty things. Uh, then we got genetic, it's the having chosen the wrong parents to net negative effect. Kinetic, gunshot, stab, car crash, falls. Toxic, and that's just being poisoned. And I put some examples up here that you can see in obese and stroke for a chronic disease. We got stroke, uh, coronary artery disease, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, and chronic kidney disease as examples. Important to note here, this is about 86% of our medical spend on a runaway uh, medical uh, expenditure. And it's 86% of spend, 80% of deaths. These are 14% of the spend or 20% of deaths. And I call this the willful divide because the significant thing here for us as CrossFitters is that we have, we have solution to this side. And the solution here is what? It's a get off the couch, off the carbs, because our claim is, is it sedentarism and excessive consumption of refined carbohydrate, carbohydrate toxicity, some have half jokingly said, are the overwhelming cause of what's going on in this bucket. But, the, but those behaviors, the sedentarism and the uh, 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 excessive consumption of refined carbohydrate, those are willful decisions. Sometimes it's called lifestyle illness. It's, got, it's not a lifestyle. This has nothing to do with, with vacationing in the Riviera or, or having a boat or a nice car or, or taking vacations. It's not lifestyle. It's two pathological behaviors, two, two deleterious, extremely damaging behaviors that were, that were choices. And so the solution here, it's behaviorally driven and it'll be behaviorally cured or it'll be medically babysat. And if you look to our current crisis, this thing that has us all locked up inside and everyone six feet away from each other or farther, um, what has happened is that the uh, SARS COVID-2 virus, which is the, re the agent, the virus responsible for COVID-19, the illness, has escaped the microbic bucket and landed in the chronic disease bucket and essentially started a trash can fire with a precipitation of death to mix metaphors. These people on this side, there's a lot of comorbidities in the chronic disease bucket that doesn't tend to sit in the microbic genetic, kinetic, or toxic. And so if you have, if you're a victim of VX nerve gas, uh, you probably weren't also a victim of botulism or arsenic poisoning. That would be very unusual. Uh, same thing with a car crash. Someone, someone that's, uh, you know, crashed a car. It would, it, it would be. It, there's a small percentage of car crash victims that were also stabbed, but you, and you can see that for each of these that they don't tend to sit in the bucket as comorbidities. Um, but on this side, if you have one, there's it's just exceedingly probable you have two, and once you have three or four, it's unusual not to have the others. Just that simple. And so we have to ask ourselves, these are the dead guys. Um, we want to ask ourselves, is this, is, is, does it make sense 
to call all of this, uh, uh, the deaths that are happening over here, and this is the overwhelming majority of them, 95% of the deaths in New York, 99% in uh, Italy. And so it's fair to say that, that the death is happening over here to people that are already seriously ill and elderly. What was the number for Italy? Uh, 99%. Um, of the population had a, a, a comorbidities, and the average comorbidities was 2.7, and the average age was 81 for a life, with a life expectancy of 82. In fact, Ferguson from the Imperial College said this morning that uh, of the, of the uh, uh, 20,000 deaths that, that might happen in, uh, in England, in Great Britain, um, sorry about the 500,000 number, I messed up, my model didn't work right or something, but uh, of those 20,000, he's saying now that, that uh, half of them were going to die within the, the next year anyways, and which is maybe more callous than I would want to be, but I also wouldn't have floated the 500,000 figure. But uh, I see these as de chronic disease deaths. Um, what else would hurt people in this bucket? Let's look at kinetic. Um, what's a fall imply for someone who's obese, diabetic, has had a stroke, um, is hypertensive, a bathroom fall? Does it, does it pretend the same outcome for, for someone chronically diseased as it does for a, a healthy 25 years old? Not at all. And that would be true too of, of a toxin, anything kinetic, any kind of genetic problem, and any microbe is going to create a faster death precipitation within this crowd. And then the last point, I'm just making it one more time because it's really important. CrossFit fixes this, medicine babysits it. 